Okay, in this section we're going to talk about the um, stoichiometry of combustion and what impact the stoichiometry of a mixture has on the different um, characteristics of the combustion. Okay, so um, in the last section I showed you the way to work out um, the ideal um, air to fuel ratio um, for um, a hydrocarbon. And that, that is called the stoichiometric air to fuel ratio. And I've in this table I've done it for um, a range of mixtures. So I've done it for octane and for gasoline. If you remember I said octane was the um, kind of gasoline substitute. And I've also done it for dodecane and for diesel. And you can see there's a slight difference between octane, which should be about 15 um, to 1, and gasoline, which is 14.7 to 1, dodecane and diesel. So the um, question is, what's causing this difference? Why is there a difference between two? Well, it basically comes down to the change in fuel composition. So octane is a pure substance, but gasoline obviously isn't. And here's an example of what makes up gasoline, so 100% gasoline. And you can see it's a complete soup and mixture of different uh, hydrocarbons that make this up. So it's a complete um, soup of um, mixtures that um, uh, make up gasoline. So you've got toluene, xylene, pentane, etc. And this obviously depends on A, where the um, petroleum has been um, extracted from the ground in the world, and also the um, the refinement process as well. So there are obviously slight differences between uh, the gasoline and the ideal um, sub uh, substance. So let's say... Up till now, we've only talked about the exact amount of air that needs to be reacted with the fuel for complete combustion. And this is the stoichiometric ratio. But in practice, um, we might have a little bit too much air, a little bit too little air, too much fuel, too little fuel, etc. Vice versa. Um, and this is measured by... Um, one of the ways to measure this is by the air-to-fuel equivalence ratio. Um, sorry, the fuel-to-air equivalence ratio. And so this is the um, uh, the mass of the fuel over the mass of the air for your actual process divided by the mass of the fuel over the mass of the air for your stoichiometric process, okay? So you can see that you give this gives you a ratio. So, for example, if you were looking at a mixture which was um, slightly fuel-rich, then your... Um, the ratio of your fuel to your air for your actual process would be greater than the ratio for your stoichiometry. So this ratio would be greater than 1, okay? And you know you've got stoichiometric conditions if your um, equivalence ratio is equal to 1. Now, here we've expressed it as um, fuel over the air, but it also can be expressed as the air-to-fuel equivalence ratio. And they've got different symbols. Um, so you can see this is the mass of air over the mass of fuel actual over the mass of air massive fuel for stoichiometry. Um, tend to use this one lambda a lot more in the um, automotive um, uh, sector. Um, you might have heard that, you know, lambda sensors, you might have heard of those. And the fuel air equivalence ratio tends to use a bit, be used a bit more in the aviation um, sector. So you need to be a little bit careful when someone's talking in terms of equivalence ratio. Um, if it's not clear what um, whether they're talking about fuel over air or air over fuel, then it's best to clarify because depending on which sector their background they're from, they they might be using a very different definition to you, which can obviously make a big difference because you know, for example, we said that if it's fuel rich, theta is um, greater than one. If it's whereas lambda lambda would be less than one for fuel rich um, system. So how does um, this uh, um, equivalence ratio impact on different parameters. Well, we I'm just choosing lambda here. So if we look at lambda, then um, if we plot that against uh, flame speed, you can see that you get this parabolic flame, um, par parabolic shape. Now this might be um, counterintuitive, um, but it will hopefully start to make sense when you think about it. That the flame temperature is um, and you get the shape for both the flame speed, I should say, and the flame temperature, which obviously linked. So if you think about it, if you think um, that you're kind of running um, lean, for example, 
Um, so you got lambda uh, greater than one. Now it makes sense that um, if you've got excess air um, in your mixture, then um, that excess air is basically heat acting as a sponge and it's soaking up heat. So as heat's being created from the reaction, the excess air is absorbing that heat, but it's no playing no part in the combustion because you've got excess air, so you don't need that air. So it's taking heat out of the um, out of the out of the flame and reducing the flame temperature, and the, reducing the flame temperature reduces the flame speed. And conversely, if you go the other way, if you've got excess fuel, the excess fuel is doing the same thing. You're spending that energy break heating up the fuel and um, dissociating it ready for to react but it's got nothing to react with because you haven't got enough oxygen so it's the same thing so the peak temperature is always around I say around stoichiometry but it's ever so slightly rich okay this it's just um, ever so slightly fuel rich and that's where you get the peak flame speed and the peak um, flame temperature So if you, um, what that ultimately has is an impact on your power. So if you think of it in terms of a reciprocating engine, um, if you've got the maximum, you want to be working around the peak flame temperature um, because that's going to give you the, be able, mean that you can extract more power um, from, from your piston um, and give you more power at the wheels. And conversely to that, the um, fuel consumption again is you know it's as minimum around stoichiometry but just when it's ever so slightly um, fuel lean um, and that makes sense if you think about it because if you've just got a little bit of excess oxygen then this if there's any um, if your mixing is poor then you're going to mop up um, use that phrase if you're going to be able to mop up um, all the fuel um, in the combustion chamber and make sure that it's all completely combusted or as well as it, it can be you, you'll never get to zero um, but you know you'll be able to minimize it just with a little bit of excess oxygen so um, and just kind of going back to the the beginning a bit really I mentioned to you about the um, uh, flame triangle saying that you need um, oxygen and fuel in the right ratios um, and um, fuels actually have what are called as a uh, flam flammable range, and that's defined by the lower flammability limit and the upper flammability limit. And this changes for each fuel, and each fuel has its own um, particular range. And here's some examples here. So you've got methane, propane, petrol, gum nox, and hydrogen. And... Um, this kind of makes sense, and what's the, is the um, percentage along the bottom? Is that's the percentage of um, fuel in air? So it makes sense that if you start here, let's let's take hydrogen for the example. If you've got no hydrogen, then you're not going to have any combustion. But you can see that you need a certain percentage, and for hydrogen, it's around about four percent. You need a certain percentage of hydrogen in that air to be able to sustain combustion. That makes sense. And likewise, coming from it from the other end, if you've got 100% fuel, you're not going to have any combustion. So you need some oxygen in there. So if you start increasing the oxygen content, you're coming from this end of the graph. And when you get to sort of 75% full fuel, 25% air, then um, combustion can start taking place. And as I say, that varies for each of the fuels. Hydrogen's um, got a particularly wide flammability limits which in my mind raising, raises some question marks on the suitability of this as a fuel for automotive applications, but that's a, a different matter for a different lecture. But the point I wanted you to get from here is that um, each fuel has its own flammability limits, so you can't keep increasing or decreasing uh, the amount of air fuel indefinitely without it um, um, and still be able to sustain combustion.